Can everybody hear me all right? Okay, um, so uh, my name is Lennart Gudbrandsson uh, and I am part of the Swedish chapter, Wikimedia Sverige, of the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, I run a few projects for them and I'm, I've been a volunteer on Wikipedia since 2005. Uh, and I'm going to um, uh, talk not about the Iraq war, um, but this is all, uh, uh, these are books that contain all the versions of the article about the Iraq war on English Wikipedia. And I'll get back to that in a, in a few seconds, in a few minutes I should say, because this is something um, that has to do with the gender gap on Wikipedia, which is what I am going to talk about. Namely, the Wikipedia ga gender gap and what we're trying to do about it. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about that uh, also in a second, what the gender gap is and, and the numbers and so on. Welcome. Um, so, does anybody know uh, who these people are? Okay, uh, the woman on the, uh, on the right is Helen Fielding. Um, she is uh, uh, an author and she has written about um, a, a series of books uh, about a very famous character that I think you all know who's written diaries. Anybody? Uh, I can't think of the name. Bridget Jones. Yes, it's Bridget Jones, the, the author of the Bridget Jones Diaries. And this is Grace Fields, um, and she is also a famous comedian uh, from the 40s uh, in England. And the reason I bring this up, because I, on my, um, part of what I do on Wikipedia is I write about the larger issues. Uh, I try not to, to to get into the article about Helen Fielding uh, and the article about Grace Fields, but about British comedy or, uh, or humor or literature, the, the basic articles, and these are often very hard to write. Um, but one of the things that strike you when you write these sort of articles is that there is a distinct lack of female figures to write about uh, if you look at the Wikipedia articles, these, when you come to British comedy, which is what I'm writing about at the moment, uh, these are the two main main figures in, in this sense. And, and there are, of course, many more, uh, but these are the ones that are covered at, at present. And I think this is something that is symbolic of, of what I am going to talk about. Um, Another thing that is symbolic is the whole conflict that rose uh, when Bradley Manning um, turned out to be Chelsea Manning. And I don't know if you know the story, but it, it turns out that he wants to be known as a she. And this has caused quite a lot of controversy on English Wikipedia. Uh, when people wanted to move the article to Chelsea Manning, um, which is what she wants to be known as, uh, people change it back. And, and this is the sort of controversy where people don't rely on the sources as they normally do. They trust their gut instinct. And this is where you can see where, what people really feel about these kinds of issues. And this is where I try to uh, uncomplicate matters by just dividing people into two large groups. We have women and we have men. And the issue about um, Chelsea Manning and so on, about um, gays and lesbians and, and, and trans people and, and so on, these are of course very important issues but I'm going to set them aside for the moment uh, to talk about the very large group of people that aren't covered uh, as yet on Wikipedia, which is a problem. 
so I, I'm going to simplify this, uh, and I, I hope you understand that I know that the situation is more complex than this, but let's keep it very, very simple. Uh, so, uh, how many um, people, how many biographies are there on Wikipedia that could be divided into these two categories? Well, we don't know. It's, it's kind of hard to, to, uh, to measure how many biographies there are. And we have a category system that, that makes it a little bit easier. Um, but it, it's nonetheless, it's hard to measure this. On Swedish Wikipedia, where I am um, um, most active, we have tried to, to determine this by actually um, uh, categorize people according uh, to their gender. And what we've found is something quite startling. For every female biography, there are four male biographies. <laughs> this is on Swedish Wikipedia. And on German Wikipedia, which actually was the one that started this, the figures are one female for six male biographies. And one of the problems is, we don't know if this is normal. Because, historically speaking, of course, more men than female have been famous. Uh, but we don't know the actual figures. So what, what, what should an encyclopedia cover? What, what should be the ideal balance here? We don't know that. And neither does Encyclopedia Britannica or anybody else for that matter. But this is one of the things that we try to find a good way to think about. And it's not easy. And one of the uh, problems about this is, of course, this is the articles. But what does it look like on the other side when it comes to the number of editors? Well, there the problem is even more problematic. It looks like this. So for each woman, there is nine men that edits Wikipedia. And, of course, the number of people that actually edit Wikipedia, it's, it's quite a lot smaller than you would imagine. Um, based on the people who read Wikipedia, it's, all, uh, it's half a percent of the people that read Wikipedia, that edit Wikipedia. So these are quite a small fraction of the readers, but nonetheless, the fraction of, of women in that group is even smaller. But these, this, of course, has um, some very serious, um, very serious repercussions when it comes to this. Um, but I'll, I'll come to that in a little while. Uh, one of the things that you need to remember about Wikipedia, and something that not many people think about when they, when they think about Wikipedia, is the fact that Wikipedia is not one encyclopedia. It's a collection of, of different Wikipedias. Um, this, for instance, is together with the other articles when it comes to the Iraq war, is a separate encyclopedia. On Swedish Wikipedia, uh, the articles about birds are fantastic. We have so many ornithologists that uh, we don't know what to do with them. <laughs> so, um, the, the article about birds are amazing. The article about literature, on the other hand, are another thing. Because we don't have as many people that are active that write about literature because they're often active on other, um, other media. They're on blogs or they're on, um, they're on their own uh, websites or they're on forums. And they're not on Wikipedia. And what we, we are trying to, to fix this, but of course, what we can do is try to make the best articles that we can in the meantime to try and lure them into Wikipedia, so to speak. But this is, this is something that not many people think about. They think about Wikipedia as a whole, but really it's a, it's a, a collection of Wikipedias, and we need to keep that in mind when, it, when we talk about the following. So, um, what can we do to solve this gender gap issues? 
Uh, well, there have been a number of different tries to, to try and fix this. And I'm going to tell you about one that has been sort of a failure. Uh, and I think you can see why when I show you this next slide. Okay, so on Danish Wikipedia, uh, just a few months ago, they made a pink uh, Wikipedia globe as a symbol to try and make women more comfortable on Wikipedia and, and make uh, the, the, um, the uh, a specific project for women, women on Wikipedia. And this, of course, made a lot of Danish comedians happy because <laughs> they had so much fodder for a comedy for the next week. Um, and this is not a good idea to, to try and single out women uh, in that fashion. But there is a germ in that idea that is kind of good. And I, uh, I'll get back to that too in a, in a, in a second. Uh, but this is not a good idea to try and, and make a pink Wikipedia for women. There, there have been some suggestions from people that have very successful wikis in themselves about fashion, for instance, to try and make Wikipedia look good. Uh, and, and there is some truth in that Wikipedia kind of looks like um, functionalistic or, or very, very bare bones and, and um, just the facts man kind of, kind of website. And, and, and of course, it, that can be something that women may focus more on than, than men do, but I don't think that's the entire truth there. So, um, we have a CEO of the Wikimedia Foundation, and the Wikimedia Foundation is the, uh, the non-profit that runs Wikipedia, and she's been with us since 2005, I think. Um, she's a very pleasant woman, and if you have the chance, Try to meet her and talk with her, and um, she'll be quitting in, I think, a year's time or something like that, which is a pity, but I think she's going to have a wonderful life her, uh, from thereafter. And she's a journalist, um, and she's been with the Canadian Broadcasting Company, and because of this, uh, she is big on transparency. And this fits very well with the Wikipedia movement because we're big on transparency as well. You can look at any, um, any version of any article, for instance, uh, in Wikipedia. And you can look at all our budgets and all our financial statements as well. But they're only a tiny per percent of, of what we do that you can't actually access unless you're a bureaucrat or something like that. But they're mainly about death threats and stuff like that, that you wouldn't anyway want to, to meet. But anyway, she's big on transparency. And a couple of years ago, she, uh, she thought that one way to, to increase the transparency is to let the community decide what should be the focus when it comes to Wikipedia. And of course, one of the things that the community wanted was to increase participation. We want more people to write the Wikipedia articles. And of course, the biggest group that aren't involved, uh, the biggest groups, I should say, say is people uh, where there's no internet, and we're trying to do stuff about that, uh, but also women, because that's the largest group of people that are disenfranchised when it comes to Wikipedia. So she, she's been very active when it comes to this, and she's written two very good blog posts about this, and uh, I'll really encourage you to, to take a picture of these and, and try to find them later on. Um, I will talk about uh, these uh, a little bit uh, and outline this, but these are really good texts, and you should read them. Uh, so Unlocking the Clubhouse is uh, the name of a book title that she has been writing, uh, she has been reading um, and encouraging people to read. Um, and it outlines a few ways 
that we could encourage the women to edit Wikipedia. And we're actually doing most of these already. Uh, and we're increasing um, our, um, our focus on, on this issue. Um, so uh, one of the things that, um, that this book um, encourages us to do is to focus very hard on encouraging women. Just, uh, just outreach towards everybody isn't going to bring in the women to w edit Wikipedia. You need to focus on the women specifically. And you should get women people, well, well, um, you, get, you should get females to attract the other females. You shouldn't get a man to stand here as I am right now and try to, to, to get the female editors to come in. You should, you should have a female person talking about this. Um, and you should have, um, um, for instance, activities directed towards only women. Uh, for instance, editor thumbs or uh, meetups for women only. Uh, one thing that will come up is there's going to be opposition towards this. People are going to say you shouldn't focus on women specifically and, and, the, and they will criticize your methods and so on. And you should ignore this. This is one of the, the ways that we can encourage with women to start edit Wikipedia, is to ignore the opposition. You have to do this. Um, Another thing that, another way to encourage uh, women hello, uh, is to uh, try to make the um, Wikipedia um, environment more friendly towards women. And I'll, I'll try to explain a little bit more what we're doing in that area in just a second here. Uh, and the last one of the, of the five ways that, that, uh, that Sue outlines here is to, to show what kind of effect their work on Wikipedia is having, what, what kind of usefulness their participation brings, not just to them, but to society as a whole. This is something that females tend to... Um, tend tend to find very motivating. Okay, so the other blog post, Nine Reasons Women Don't Edit Wikipedia, in their own words, deals with um, a lot of hard truths about Wikipedia. And we are starting to see some action in this area. Um, but one of the things that they mention is that the interface is very difficult. Um, and we are starting to see the WYSIWYG. Have, have you seen the visual editor? Have you tried it? Okay, it's very much easier to edit Wikipedia now, and it's getting even better. Um, but it, it's taking some time to, to come to this point, actually, and, and we're very sorry about that. We, it's a hard, um, uh, hard software to write for, apparently. Another thing that females say they say is a reason why they don't edit is that they're busy. It's a very good reason. They, they tend to work more than men do, uh, and they tend to work at home as well as um, at work. So this is something that we need to keep in mind. Can we make it easier for women to edit in their workplace, or could we, could we men perhaps, try and help women in, in, at home and do the dishes and stuff. Um, another thing that we've seen over and over again during um, the Gothenburg Book Fair, for instance, when, when we, we go and take pictures of famous authors, it's a very good opportunity to, to take pictures that we can upload to Wikipedia. And we've taken that opportunity as well to talk to, to women and try to encourage them to edit Wikipedia. And what, what we've seen is this dialogue. And we've seen it over and over and over again. So it's not just one person. Uh, we say, do you know that you can edit Wikipedia? Yes, of course I know that. 
that did you do that you could? No. People tend to uh, seem to not think of themselves as Wikipedia editors. They have such a bad uh, uh, view of themselves as knowledgeable people that they don't consider writing for Wikipedia. You think you got the words wrong? Sorry? You said you fight. Yeah, is it? Yeah. Yes, did you, you know that anyone can edit? Well, yeah, uh, but, but you could say you both um, times, and we, we can have... We, like we the general series. you and then the specific uh, you. Yeah, 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 it's an <laughs> inclusive and exclusive you. So, um, um, anyway, so, so the next thing that, uh, that we've noticed is that females tend to abhor conflict more than men do. And on Wikipedia, there can be there can be conflict when it comes to what should be in the articles. And we try to make it a more positive place. Uh, so far, we haven't gone as far as uh, the comment section on YouTube, but, we, we, but that's a very low bar to set for an um, for a academic discourse. Um, another thing that females don't like um, um, more than men do is when their edit gets reverted. So if, uh, if a person writes something on Wikipedia and it gets reverted, females then tend to take that more personally than men do. Men tend to, to take that as, well, that person is a dick uh, and I'm going to continue writing. While, whereas females will, will react more personally and, and often quit Wikipedia. Um, and another reason uh, is that Wikipedia is misogynic, and this is perhaps the most hardest pill of all to solve. And we've seen that over and over again. And uh, in uh, with the next reason is that Wikipedia uh, tends to be also very sexual in some some ways. We've seen, for instance, in the article about article about beauty, the, we've seen uh, women with very scantily clad and, and so on. So, uh, and people have tried to promote articles about human sexuality and, and so on to, um, to become featured articles and put them on the main page of Wikipedia. And this is something that a lot of females, not all females of course, find um, disturbing or at least off-putting. Um, a eighth reason why uh, women tend not to edit Wikipedia is that sort of the community assumes that you are a man. Uh, and it's a sort of Andrew, um, uh, Andrew, um, I'm sorry, the um, the situation sort of uh, assumes that you are a man, and, and this is something that a lot of females tend to find very um, irritating as well. And the final and perhaps most uh, important reasons for many females is that Wikipedia tend to be very non-social. It's not Facebook where you connect with people or you like stuff or uh, you don't you don't have any real connection with the other editors. And what we've seen is that, of course, these are very, very serious uh, charges against Wikipedia. And uh, what can we do to actually fix it and not have the, the pink logo uh, as a, the only means of, of doing this? Um, I, I, talked a little bit earlier about this, uh, to have sometimes to have to have uh, meetings for women only and, and have these sort of and these tend to function very well. When we when we get people get women to edit together, they, they tend to have a better time. And then when they've grown accustomed to the Wikipedia community then can they then they can be uh, introduced into the general general pool of Wikipedians. 
But we have another uh, thing that is quite a lot bigger. And this is, oh, let's see, oh, here it is. It's the Wikipedia Tea House. And this is an initiative that came about almost two years ago. And this is a, a way uh, for Wikipedians, new, new Wikipedians, to get into the community. Because as we've seen, the, uh, the females tend to be more social, and we need to, to create a social space on Wikipedia. So this is a, the place where um, new users can ask questions, and, and you won't get answers like, well, you read the fucking manual, or, or get a link with, to an acronym or something like that. Here you get uh, responses that are uh, kinder uh, and more suited towards real people. And we've seen the results from this, and it's very encouraging. This is uh, something that really inspires pe uh, females to uh, stay on Wikipedia. They start editing, but they quit sooner unless we have this program. Uh, so more and more Wikipedias are starting to uh, starting new tea houses of their own language versions, and it's yes. I'm sorry. I I just started to realize that I don't know that you said it earlier, and I was wondering if I had a misconception. But I had heard that uh, women were more likely to have their edits reverted. Than yes. Men. And so it wasn't just that women are take it personally, but also they're rejected more often. Than yeah. Men. In fact, if you're a newcomer to Wikipedia you're much more likely to be reverted, even if you make the exact same edit. So we've, we've seen people that are experienced editor that pretend to be new editors, and edits that they would make otherwise are reverted. Uh, so it's a bias against new editors, and it, it's, it's a real problem. Uh, but I can imagine that uh, unless it is the way that, that you propose that females are more averted, because since we don't know who, who the women are, maybe it's that they perceive the revert as more personal. Um, we, we don't actually have that much hard data about Wikipedia, because since we're not a big company and we don't want to make a lot of profits, we don't take we don't do a lot of market research. So we don't we know fairly little about our users. We do some so some um, surveys, but they're not that in depth because we don't need the clicks and we don't need the the um, the things that a normal company would use. So uh, so the the data we have is quite shallow, unfortunately. But th this is one of the ways that have, have um, ha had the most impact, the tea house. And we're starting on, on Swedish Wikipedia very soon, and it's gone to other language versions as well. Another thing that have worked quite well is the gender gap mailing list. Um, this is a place where uh, people of all genders and, and sexual orientations and so on can discuss um, the feelings involved in this and, and what you can do and, and lessons learned and, and so on. So this is a, a, a fantastic place to go. I mean, you can actually uh, sign up just using this, this uh, email address. Um, so um, we're actually working on, right now on on making it better. C could you see the, the stuff at the bottom here? Uh, yeah, yeah. So we're actually working on making it even better. We have done a, a number of workshops where people that have a lot of experience with gender issues and gender gap issues, and we have um, we have a page here um, at bit.ly slash gender gap strategy where you can go and, and add your own ideas. 
And I should warn you, it's a very long page because very, people are very, very uh, invested in this issue. And there have been some very, very cool ideas proposed over the years. But since this is only an overview, I, I would go into all of the details in that. But, but it's, it's a very good page. And if, you're, if you have similar problems of your own, I suggest you go there as well because you know, there are very, some very good stuff there. And in fact, uh, I haven't prepared very much more, and I, uh, because I think the question part of this is the coolest. So uh, I, I tend to prepare less than, than my allotted time. So I really encourage you to ask questions if you have any. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I can I can remember the story um, from the United States from the beginning of the year. There was this strange uh, category war called um, American writers and American women writers or yes. female writers yeah. or something yeah. like this. Yes. Um, do you know how the actual situation is at the moment? Uh, I haven't no, no, no I, I, I've read about it, but I, I haven't followed the discussions because, lately. Because what, what uh, baffles me is, I mean, if we want to try to encourage women to work on the net, and then we uh, yeah, just divide uh, those sections. I mean, there, there is no category, for example, American male writers or something like Yes, that. yes. Uh, so, um, yeah, it's just a Yeah, yeah it, it's the, for instance, the heteronormativity and the andronormativity. But the, the males tend to be the standard, and the, and the female tends to be the deviation from the standard. And, and we've, we've seen that on a lot of um, other language, language versions of Wikipedia. So it's not, it's not original to, or the, the only one, the English Wikipedia, where, where that happens. But what we've done is trying to, since English Wikipedia don't have the categories for men, male or female, it, it's basically the Swedish Wikipedia and the German Wikipedia of the large ones that, that have done those kind of ca categorizations. And so English Wikipedia do have categories for, for male and female, but they don't use them. It's not something that, they, that they've implemented fully. And it would take a lot of time to, to, uh, to categor categorize all the, all the people into male and female. When we did it on Swedish Wikipedia, I think we had around 100,000 um, biographies, and it took something like three months to do it. And my, when, I, I, when I think about Swedish Wikipedia uh, um, compared to English Wikipedia, I usually try to think uh, in, uh, that Wikipedia, English Wikipedia is 10 times larger. It, it's not really true, but it's a it's a good measurement to, to try to think about. So, thirty months it would take to categorize all the all the biographies into into the dif different genders. So it, it would take a lot of effort to do it. They are both. So. But, uh, of course, but, but no, the categorization on, on Swedish Wikipedia was mainly done by bots, and it, 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 and it still took three months to do it. But, but it, it's, it's something that we've seen in a couple of cases. So for in, it, it's not that uncommon on, on, on TV and other media as well. You have women football, for instance, or women soccer, um, while the other one is just called soccer or, or football. Um, so in, in that case, it's very hard to know whether Wikipedia should be at the forefront in this, um, or if we should be neutral uh, and say, this is the way that other people um, call it. Uh, and it's, it's, not, it's not an easy question to answer. Any more? It's not really a question, it's more like a parenthesis. Uh, I was going to tell you something before, but I didn't have time. Uh, Erik spoke about uh, the global perspective, and he mentioned that 
uh, I'm not sure if I think it was English Wikipedia. There are more articles about uh, Pokemons and female porn stars than on female writers. Yeah. So that's kind of scary. Thinking. Yeah, yeah, it is. Uh, and in fact, I would say that the whole area uh, of pornography is one of the better encyclopedias in, on, on Wikipedia. <laughs> A lot like the, the, the encyclopedia about birds. If you, th if, you, if you start to think about Wikipedia as a collection of encyclopedia, it start to, you start to put things together uh, in, in, a, in a quite another way. Um, but we've seen some instances where one person can actually change the entire set of articles in one of those sub-encyclopedias. I have a friend called Adrienne Waterwitz, and she's a, uh, she's a literature major and uh, a Wikipedia, of course. And a few years ago, she started uh, writing very, very good articles about Jane Austen and Mary Wollstonecraft and, and other female writers and their works. Uh, and the articles got so good that other people were inspired to write about literature, with the, which they haven't done up until her, uh, um, her efforts uh, had really paid off. And I, I, I use that often as an example of what one person could do on Wikipedia. You can do, while only editing your own articles, you can change how people perceive an entire subject matter. And there are very, um, very, very good articles that, that you see. Yes? I have reflections, not a question. Yeah, question. yeah. I mean, I think that, well, listening to it, I wouldn't say that it is okay, not okay, but to kind of categorize women as one group either. No, 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 and it's I mean, very what strikes me as well is that when you speak about problem representation of women, one thing is that you speak about, well, whatever, the general issue of fairness, how many people get to write, you know, what is now the biggest encyclopedia in the world, and um, it can be just very elevated subjects like, I don't know, what are birds. And when we speak about that, um, I guess from our society it comes that women have maybe less self-esteem or they're not trusting themselves that much with technology or whatever, you know, and, and that, that's something that um, you can do, can adapt a bit and or in general not only address, it. plus they're not only women who are, have these issues, no, I mean, they're no, also men. No, of course, so, I mean, of yes. course you can address this with making it simpler or just putting somewhere like, please keep in mind that you can just click on edit and change this. I mean, yeah, you know, yeah. um, so that's one problem. Another problem is that when you think about um, women um, as professionals um, and the ones who can write more about more professional fields and that it, in these fields also more men tend to dominate because of different circumstances, then I think um, this making it simpler is not a issue at all. It's more to make a political statement of how important it is that more women participate. Yeah. And, you know, so that, that's one strategy. And the third one, when you speak about the, uh, these controversial articles like women and literature and you know whatever mm, that you have to few female figures describe, um, then it's not a women question, question again. And of course, you can presume that if there would be more women, they would not be in, they would be more interested on yeah. into the subjects of you know other women. But that's actually not exactly. Yeah, the, I mean, you can also sensitize the men who write about these things. It's not. So I'm just thinking that, you know, when you think about strategies, you should also try to, because when you say, let's start more women, and sometimes, and, and then sometimes you end up, I think, also thinking about something like, make, let's make it pink because all women like pink. I mean, we have so many different women, and you have so many different issues. Of course, of course. Uh, and, and, and you're right. It, these are very difficult questions. Uh, some, uh, when I talk about this, uh, sometimes, uh, some women, take it very, very personally. They don't want to be categorized as a woman editor. They, they want to be counted as a person, not a woman. And, and that's another thing. And, and what we have are very blunt instruments to dealing with this issue. Um, but 
there have been some very good progress, um, and um, uh, the the page about this has, has a list of of some of the uh, activities that uh, have worked well, and one thing that they found is that although all of this is true, what you what you've said uh, that. It's not only females that, that write about female uh, people. Uh, that, of course, that is true. But it's also true that, realistically speaking, if you want uh, biographies about females, it is the females that are going to do the bulk of the work. I am sorry about this, but, but what we've seen is that that's the way it works. And um, of course, um, I, I try to, to, to write as many biographies as diverse as I can. Um, and, and I know that many, many, many other people do too. But there is a bias here. Uh, and we need to, to, to be honest about the bias, unfortunately. But, but I, I think you have some valid points. Yeah, I would comment on that. So I had a couple of, of thoughts based on your thoughts. Yeah. Uh, one was that uh, with the outreach program for women and attracting more men to free open source software, we found that our efforts actually just improved the situation for all new comers because yeah. of problems that yeah. women often have in getting started or problems that everybody has. Yeah, the tea um, house uh, it's, is a it's good a great example. Effort and yeah. It's exactly similar to some of the things that we're doing, although a little bit more organized and puffed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so I think that's that's really great, and I think that's a really good point. I think that the the one thing that um, that I think you're sort of touching on is the is the the, the sheer. I, I didn't actually believe this for a long time, but the integration of male privilege in our communication is something that I had never really appreciated before. And um, it wasn't actually until I became an Ada Initiative advisor and started being on the list and hear conversation about things like if you were interested in getting your message. Um, across more prominently, you should get some men to sign on to it because they have, quote, magic man sparkles. They've yeah, never heard yeah, that expression yeah. before. And it's absolutely true. I've been in so many situations where a woman will say something, then a man will agree, and all of a sudden everyone will listen yeah. more, um, you know, more wholeheartedly. And I think that baked into Wikimedia is the fact that, you know, people have been discounting women's contributions for a long time. So a lot of the women who are notable or have had notable contributions have been overlooked. And so there's this like just snowballing effect where it's you know, where it seems like there are fewer women who are doing things of prominence, but their contributions have been discounted. I'm not saying that, you know, that this happens all the time and that for every man there's you know, <laughs> uh, I, I don't know how the percentages work out in a lot of my experience is anecdotal, so it doesn't count, kind of, but the the mere um, integration of male privilege into the infrastructure of Wikimedia and our general communication on the internet is so prevalent that um, I think these initiatives are, are, are essential. Yes, yes. I agree. There, there, there's a, a fantastic photo uh, of Patrick Stewart, you know, from Star Trek The Next Generation, and he's holding a, a sign that says, because people listen more to old white men um, I will do my share, and he has written a series of, of comments about uh, uh, stuff like supporting uh, gay marriage and, and stuff like that. <laughs> just, just because people listen to older white men. And have experience with gay Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's that voice. <laughs> no, but, but it, it, it's true. It, it, um, there are some issues dealing with this that are very difficult. Um, such as um, <coughs> such as female inventors uh, and people that have been largely overlooked by history that haven't been improved on by Wikipedia. And we've seen this in, in a number of cases. And another thing that we have a difficulty in is the internet. Wikipedia and internet is a very bad uh, has a very bad relationship when it comes to certain stuff. We have a lot of female fashion bloggers that in any other universe would be considered relevant that don't have their own articles. Just because they're on a fashion blog. If they've written about politics, 
they would of course be included in, in Wikipedia. Uh, in Sweden we have Blondin Bella, which is a, a famous um, fashion and political blogger. Um, and her article was deleted so many times before it was finally accepted. Uh, and there is a whole list of, of these people that, that have been um, that have been sort of set aside or, or been um, been hidden from from Wikipedia, and it's a shame. We should do more to to cover these things. Uh, there are solutions for other subjects, so we should find solutions for this as well. In our program for women, we had a lot of resistance within the free, various free software communities when it was first launched. A lot of really aggressive attacks about how the program was sexist, and yeah. um, and those have, in all of the you know in Gnome in particular, where the program has been so successful, I haven't had, heard a complaint in years. Um, so hopefully, Good. yeah, it's sort of when people see that we're we're attracting more, not just more women, but more really talented women, yeah. the complaints yeah. die down because they sort of say, ah, okay, well these were women who weren't that interested in free software, who now are interested in free software, so, and our community is changing and these people are doing really um, credible work. And have you been, I mean, I, I haven't really been following if there are any published results of the, um, of the work that's been done already, especially with the, uh, the visual editor and stuff. Do you have any... Results well, yet? Yeah, I yeah. think there are some some results, but I don't have them at my fingertips, so to speak, uh, right now. But, but I'll, I'll try and I'll try and find them for you if you want. Uh, but the, the results from the tea house is really really encouraging. The number of females who stay are very much higher than any other other program that we have. Uh, so if you want to look at something, you should look at. Uh, how the tea house is set up. One thing that we've done is to to try and make the environment cool for everybody, and not just for people who think that white and black are the only colors, uh, and uh, you should keep it as simple as possible. Uh, it's it's not as gory as the pink logo, but but it it's kind of thinking about how Wikipedia looks, and it's something that so that many people have commented on that the, the look is is more softer and and more attractive but also uh, the thing about being a most social area on wikipedia not not just having the normal discussion or talk pages where people can can discuss things but a, a, a play a more of a forum uh, sort of place and it's been very well received when it comes to uh, this. So, in terms of, and it's very easy to adapt to other situations as well. What 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 the program is about is to invite people, people who have started editing and may risk being reverted or may risk uh, uh, get a stern talking to or something like that, and and really outreach to them specifically and say, hey, you should come and, and be with us here at the tea house and, and we'll take care of you. And, and that sort of really focused uh, outreach work has, has paid off. Any more comments or thoughts or questions? Yes. So uh, not a question, but then uh, uh, from my experience back in India, so the last six months, like I reached Gothenburg for a couple of months. Uh, I have been part of a free software group. We also kind of work with Wikimedia India Foundation. Yeah. We've conducted three uh, Wikipedia women workshops. And I think one interesting thing which kind of took off, like you also kind of said that uh, if there is a female contributor kind of handling those workshops, it kind of works well. So uh, the Wikimedia India chapter recently had the first uh, executive member. So it was also more interesting for us to kind of uh, project her also because it's like about 10 people in the executive uh, you know, committee of Wikimedia India and there's one you know, female uh, person. You know. oh, okay. So we kind of still projected her to be the thing and of the three workshops we had like about uh, 50 participants in each across three different uh, cities in India. 
a very good response and also the nature of uh, you know the content like they perform skits in encouraging the you know women how why is it uh, like one issue which you kind of did not uh, uh, point out was <coughs> not just about uh, articles about uh, you know female writers or anything even opinions like some of the issues have a very um, male uh, dominated opinion about it so even to kind of utilize uh, an issue to make make it like a little more uh, gender neutralized opinion about certain sensitive issues which because could, could you mention something uh, um, give an like, example uh, for example in india we have some local issues like um, there is discrimination for uh, you know like girls going to schools in rural india yes now the experience there has been that the some of the articles maybe i can just you know fetch it out and then show it also uh, that if the contributors are like there are certain issues nuances in that particular case like why are the girls not dropping out of schools so now if male contributors are writing about it certain yes. this, you know yeah. realities yeah. are yeah. just excluded like there's house household work or things like that uh, which is like a little too extreme also in rural india because they do not have that experience those aspects are just missed out so issues like that were kind of brought up and certain articles were refined and mm -hmm. that was interesting so we, we it was like the entire thing was like uh, you know no male intervention or anything and then we were just uh, asking for reports it was uh, a very good exercise yeah very cool <laughs> good of you yeah I, the only thing that uh, that i worry about the perspective of it's it's better to have a woman standing up and, and inviting more women is that the problem with that is that not all women... No, no man sparkles? <laughs> <laughs> well, there's that. But there's also the fact that not all women want to be representatives for all women. So, no, for example, no. you know, when I started getting involved with free open source software, I was asked a number of times to give interviews about women in free software. And I was like, especially then, I was like, I don't know anything about women. I know my, I know my stuff. And all you, apparently, all you need to do to be an expert on women in free software is to be one. Which is, it doesn't make any sense. And then I found that when, because there are so few women that are prominent in free open source software, we're always asked what we think about women in free software, and it's not no. fair to expect women to carry the burden because not all women are interested in having this. Plus, women are already very busy, as you said. So, so asking them to then also take on this extra work is a bit tough. And I think that given the fact that we're so we're so imbalanced now, why should the one woman on the committee? have to be the one to do all this work, which if she's interested, that's great. Oh. Which, you know. Yeah, but, but it's the Jackie Robinson question. The, 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 the first black baseball player was made a symbol. Uh, so he had to talk about being black all the time. And, and uh, uh, of course, for him, it's it's kind of not a big deal. He, he sees himself in the mirror every day, and and, and he lives his life. But, but on the other hand, he encounters uh, stuff that other people, that, that, that white people wouldn't encounter. Um, and I think it could be a good idea to band together and, and form, uh, for a lack of a better term, women's groups or, or um, activities like that. To, to, because what, what, what we've seen in, in various other groups is that there are people that behave very badly towards women and, and that is something that's very hard to deal with on your own if, if you pull your experiences it's it's better um, it's easier to, to find a way to to solve those issues on conference uh, for instance is it's a good way um, a good method is to have a coded conduct for instance <coughs> Yes. I just thought about, like, you know, we had also a presentation yesterday about this identity interpretation and things like that. And I don't know, like, about the Wikipedia, but of course about the open source software. I guess the problem is that sometimes the uh, presumption is that everyone is a man. And then sometimes the men don't really realize that there are women and that they are doing a good job. And then, you know, if they find out there's one woman who is just starting, then of course they will say, like, what are you doing here at all? I, I'm just I'm just thinking that it would be interesting not to only do the uh, women events but to do the common events in the sense that you know just to invite contributors maybe the ones who are studying or whatever I mean and, and just have something together to see that there are people 
who are women and who are men and they are well, professionals or they know what they're yeah. doing more or less and you know and then it's, it would be more going through this personal uh, transformation of personal understanding um, could be something that transforms the whole community yeah definitely uh, and to build on that what we what we've seen on uh, the Gothenburg book fair where the majority of people in uh, uh, who is at the Gothenburg Book Fair are females and, and uh, middle-aged females. Uh, but there are a number of other groups as well um, that we haven't really talked about. Uh, but one thing that, that is a clear effect that we've seen is that people need faces. They, they understand sort of with a gut feeling that of course there must be people behind Wikipedia but it's not until they meet them that they start to trust it and once uh, once they meet uh, people who have edited Wikipedia and can answer some very basic questions so be, Albin has been on the Gothenburg book fair the, the questions aren't that hard oh, can I think of any question now but no, but, but, but it's often, can you trust Wikipedia, or, uh, I mean, the, 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 the stuff that you all know the answers to, but they don't, because they haven't encountered it enough to, uh, to be able to, to have some sort of coherent thought about it. But just to have faces on, on people is really important, uh, as you say. So, um, it's three minutes until one, I think I'll stop here. And, you're very welcome to, to come up to me afterwards and, and have a lovely chat. Thank you. Yeah, thank you.